Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff. It's First Impressions Day and today we're looking at the Golden Star. So yes, we're looking at the Golden Star. This is, as you can clearly see, a wooden model ship. Um, it's made by Minuta Models of Italy, um, and it's quite an old kit now, I think. Um, although this one is laser cut. Um, used to be that um, uh, wooden ships came with a lot of printed parts and you used to have to get fret saw and and cut the parts out and shape them yourself and so on and so forth and that and that created all sorts of uh, issues and then uh, laser cutting came along and that made uh, these kits more accessible to people in, in, in many ways. Uh, the box is a bit battered because I've had it quite some time and I bought it second hand so um, it, it's had quite a long shelf life. Um, the Kit number is 786 um, and it's 1 to 150, 1 to 150 scale. There you go. Um, and um, it's an English brig which has an American flag on it. Um, don't ask because I don't know. So, um, what we've got is a nice picture of the completed kit, or two pictures actually. We've got one that has all of the masts in, gives you uh, an impression of the size. And then we've got a, a more close-up one here. Um, and it's all in natural woods, so um, I, that's a, a nice variation from doing all the various painted uh, wooden ships that I've got. Um, and if we go to the side, um, it's got uh, some basic information. It's Golden Star. It's a model, not a toy. Um, it's a wood construction, and it's an English brig. Um, the two sides pretty much say a variation of that and then this top one has a few more close-up pictures of what you might be getting um, when you build the kit. So let's have a look inside. It's been a while since I've looked in this. so Okay, this is the first Minuta kit that we've reviewed on the channel. Um, so what we'll be doing as we go through this is we'll be thinking about the, the quality of these products compared to some of the other kits that we've reviewed such as Victory Models, Caldercraft, uh, Artesina, Latina and so on. Um, so we can see that we've got parts in um, some form of blister packs, um, more blister packs in there and then we've got the wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it all out. Um, and we'll have a look at instructions and plans first. So, as is always the case with wooden ships, we've got a combination of instructions and plans. So the instructions are an A4 printed individual sheets which have been stapled together. It tells us we've got 14 pages, but these are double-sided, so we've, we've only got about uh, six or seven. It also says here, August 2001 but that is a rewriting of the instructions and it does actually say newly translated and improved August 2001 um, so uh, the, the kit is a fair bit older than that I think it might even date back to uh, the 70s originally although it's unlikely that it was laser cut in those days so they may well have updated it um, but I, I'm not really sure when this originally came out. Anyway, um, what we have is um, uh, an English set of instructions and then there is a smaller um, book which is in different languages. Um, and I think primarily just Italian. Um, then as we turn the page, we've got a little bit of historical background tells us that it's um, 
the sort of vessel that was in wide use during the 17th and 18th centuries. So in, in which case it's um, not necessarily a specific ship, but representative of a type of ship. Um, then it's talking about some general notes, um, that dimensions are in millimetres and, and what some of the symbols mean, so on and so forth. Then it tells us what's on plan one um, and it gives us some instructions. So it tells us here, for example, figure one, draw the central line on each of the frames. So we've got some written instructions that, that uh, accompany the plans. So it's nice that we can cross-reference the plans because that's not always the case. And that's how that carries on through and then it gives you another plan number and you're back to figure one um, and it, it, it talks you through there. Um, it's talking you through the process, glue the doors, um, plywood part such and such um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, it's also giving you dimensions when you need to. Um, so there's all sorts of information in there. In fact, it looks quite nicely laid out um, and nice and clear. So we'll have a look at the plans in a minute and see if that all sort of makes sense. Um, and then when it gets to masting the ship, figures 12, 13, page four, and the scale side views show how to assemble the masts, tops, joints, and platforms between the sections of the masts. So we've got a sort of silhouette here which is telling you what goes where, part four, part seven, part five, part eight, part six, part nine. So masts and yards all laid out. And then as you go bel below here, um, it should tell us what they are. So four, four, four mast. That's definitely the four mast. So um, uh, yeah, and it's also giving us uh, dimensions, I think, as well minimum and maximum diameters so from 4 to 2.5 so that's giving you an understanding of the taper um, hopefully there's a little bit more information on the plans then we've got um, some more instructions about assembling the masts some instructions on the rigging before securing the yards to the mast it's advisable to tile the necessary blocks to the mast so um, it's talking about the blocks. Um, it's then telling you the letters to reference each one of the blocks. So no doubt that become clear on the plans. Um, telling you about seizing the shrouds and so on. Um, so there's quite a lot of terminology that if you're new to wooden models, you might need to, to look up. Um, I Yeah, so when we look at the... the uh, plans and the parts will get a better idea of uh, whether this is a model suitable for a beginner or not. There's instructions on tying shrouds, um, making and rigging the sails and we've got a sort of a, a map there for position of the sails. It tells you what they are, that's always handy. So if you were never sure what a jib was you now know it's that sail there. Um, and then finishing off, when the rigging is completed, fit mast end caps to the main and four top gallant masts. Drill a 0.8 hole in the end of the two top gallant masts and take a brass nail and make the two end caps from dowel drill through with an 8mm hole. So there's quite a lot of making your own parts here. It's not going to be part heavy. It's going to be uh, work heavy, <laughs> um, which is, you know, how a lot of people like it. Um, then we have a list of materials and contents of the kit. Always worth checking these off when you first get it. I've bought it secondhand and I've not checked it off, to be honest. Um, but I'm, something I'll perhaps do now I've got the kit out. Um, so it tells us we've got some walnut planks. We've got some poplar. Uh, we've got walnut dowels. Um, and then we've got a list of um, parts um, in uh, brass and probably various other materials. We've got a list of uh, wires and bits and pieces. Um, one instruction book and three plan sheets. Then we've got some general planking instructions. That's really nice. That's handy that we've got 
some instructions on planking. They haven't just left you to it, which some manufacturers do, in fairness. Um, then we've got some finishing instructions and tips. Um, a walkthrough of the tools that you will need. See, it's not a massive list. Um, wooden ship building, uh, you need quite a small number of tools. Uh, everything else, um, like with plastic modeling, uh, become nice to have once you've got past the essentials. Um, we've got some little um, instructions here for um, doing the hull. Um, yeah, I'm sure once you read them, those pictures make, would make more sense, but not quite sure about that. And that is it. So they actually look quite comprehensive and detailed. You'd actually have to sit down and, and read them to understand how good they actually are. Well, let's have a look at the plans now, and then we'll get an idea of how clear it's going to be. So the plan sheets are rather large and rather busy. Um, we've got pl three plan sheets, and other companies would have provided more and broken this up a little bit so um, what you've got is you've got um, the plans there that show you the parts and the part numbers for the um, ply um, that's going to be used and then you've got further instructions um, which um, are in addition to what we were just looking at and then we've got the drawing so uh, our further instructions probably um, are the original ones, are the, the ones that we can see here, and the uh, instruction book that we just looked at probably are in addition to these to make it uh, more understandable. Um, but anyway, um, we've also got it in multiple languages. So if I look at the English here, it says figure one, remove all the laser cut parts with accuracy. The number of each part is easily checkable on the plan. Yes, it is. Um, and then glue the frames together. And then that is what we can see up there. So hopefully with two lots of written instructions and some quite clear pictures, um, this wouldn't be too difficult to put together. And when we're uh, later on in the process of hull building, all of this plan one is to do with building the hull. You can see they're even telling you some of the sizes of the material two by two you can see there in, in figure 12 on the left um, there is some end caps and bits and pieces that go on some of the parts I suspect some of this is plywood so having uh, end caps will give it a nice finish that, that might be lacking otherwise so yeah I mean as plans go they seem to be quite clear uh, there seems to be uh, a fair amount of detail to help the modeler so yeah, not too shabby. So this is plan sheet two now, um, and we've got full drawings for the rigging here, um, which looks quite busy, but basically you've got um, a, t um, a helicopter view which gives you all the uh, numbers, and then you cross-reference those numbers with the lines, and that gives you your termination points for all the rigging. Um, so that shouldn't be too bad. Um, we've got some um, how to tie off your blocks there. Um, some other uh, deck fittings and lanterns and what have you being pulled together. Um, how to do your um, dead eyes. Um, how to tie off your shrouds. Yeah, um, and then we've got all these instructions again. So yeah, you need a bit of space to put these plans up. And these are on my kitchen floor because there's just no chance they're going on my desk. Our third and final uh, plan sheet. So there's actually two sheets because one of them is double printed, double sided. Um, this concentrates on our um, sales. So we've got some specific um, rigging related to the sales. We've got our patterns for the sales on the top there so i'm guessing that when the model was first done you got a single piece of material and you'd have to cut those out and that would be the patterns for cutting out your um sails and it has your stitching 
plan on there and then you can see there is some instructions on making the corner loops some written instructions as well and then our overall um, map with where we're going to uh, rig the sails onto the ship and our termination points on our helicopter view so all fairly straightforward standard um, approach um, obviously you've got the option of skipping the sails um, sails people are a bit divided um, in, in one sense the ship looks more fully done with the sails um, and on another sense it's a little bit difficult to see all the rigging and the and the spars and stuff with the sails on so some people like them some people don't uh, obviously you can do a combination where you've got the lower ones furled and the upper ones um, unfurled and there you can see the deck a bit better so th there is options but it's nice to have them included because if they're not included and you've got to buy them separately um, I, I can see both sides of it but we've got them in this kit so um, you're ready to go if that's what you want to do right. looking at the wooden parts now and we've got um, five millimeter I'm guessing um, let's just check that actually might be seven no, five millimeter, five millimeter ply, and it's a lovely piece of ply. There is no knots in it. There's no weaves in it. Um, it's a nice, good sheet. Now you're not going to see any of this, but it's important from the um, uh, view of the structure and structural strength of, of the model you're building. Um, and what you don't want is knots in areas where you might be having to sand things because that that. The knot material is harder than the rest of it and so it becomes very difficult to maintain an even sand. So this is important that it's all right and it's really, really nicely done. The lasering is, is crisp. I can see we have two termination points on um, most of these parts. So you've got two little tabs that you're going to have to cut through. Um, some of the mass blocks are unfortunately yeah imply that's going to detract from the, the finish of the model um, if we flip it over uh, there's very little um, laser scorching so the laser work is actually really really good um, and we can see the full outline which means the laser is properly penetrated and we've not got lots of splinters of wood that we're going to have to sand off or file off so yeah that all looks nice and crisp very very nice job um, but these parts here and potentially that if it's the rudder um, are going to be seen in which case you're going to want to replace them uh, and make them out of some some sheet because you're not going to some solid wood sheet you're not going to want them in plywood unless you can finish the edges off which you won't be able to on that. Um, our next sheet out is in walnut, but again, it is ply rather than solid wood. Um, the lasering, again, I can't fault. It's really, really crisp and well done. And if I flip it over, um, it's nice and crisp on the back side. So this is the side that would be lasered um, uh, so that it's uh, sat on the bed like that with a laser pointing down. Um, and you can just tell that that's the bit that was uh, down so this is the bit the side that's usually rough the bit that was on the the bed of the machine um, and it seems to be okay um, where it looks like they've not lasered it that's actually just the tab so they want you to join the two up to cut the part off basically and they're, they're your top rails so unfortunately we've got decorative bits which are in nice wood but they're in ply so edge on they will look dreadful um, to, which is a real shame because uh, although some of these it won't matter because this is the false deck and you're probably going to be putting deck strips on top of it so why they've done it in walnut I'm not not quite sure but some of these are decorative now some of these we saw in the instructions um, will have end caps on which will help but side on you'll be able to see and if I just hold that out you can see how visible that's going to be so you can't just varnish that, you're either painting it or you're replacing these parts. So when you spent all this money on uh, a laser, de uh, 
precisely cut laser parts and then you're having to use them as templates to cut them out of proper sheet, it's a bit frustrating. Um, so I've got to be honest, that's a bit disappointing. Even though technically it's very well done, it's a bit disappointing. Okay, this is the remainder of the timber that comes in the kit. Um, so we've got one lot of dowels there. I'm going to take the elastic band off because over time they perish and they can make some terrible marks on your, on your wood that you just can't get out. Um, so these are, um, again, all in walnut. They're very nicely done. Um, nicely cut off. There's no splintering and, and, mis and misshaping or nothing major at least. So yeah, quite happy with those. Um, that actually looks quite a nice quality material. So I'm happy with the dowels. This is the first planking um, of the, uh, the hull. And when I say first planking, I actually should just say the planking because this is a single plank hull. So technically, that is much more difficult than double planking. Um, so straight away, we can now say this is not a model for a beginner. Um, it's a model for someone who knows what they're doing when it comes to planking a hull. You appear to have plenty of material. Um, and it's nice quality material nicely chopped it's all the same length there's no splinters it's nicely sawn um, there's one or two that are a little rough but in the main i have no issues with that but it's single planked so that means you have to get every plank absolutely perfect you've not you can't do any filling particularly when this is designed to be varnished it's technically quite challenging um, so you need to have got a couple of bills at least under your belt before you'd attempt something like this. And the remainder of our um, wood, some of it is a little rough, um, both in the way it's sawn and, and, and cut. Um, and we've got some quite thick ply here, which might be some supports or something for, for the model, I'm not quite sure. Um, but there's not much of it. Um, and what there clearly isn't is any material for doing the deck planking. So now I understand why we've got that walnut sheet. <laughs> You're basically going to have to draw your planking on with a pencil. Uh, now, they're not the only company that have done that. Billings did it with their 1200 um, Titanic, and it took what could have been a beautiful model and turned it into a pile of junk. Um, and for me, you need to put some actual planks down on it. So you need some very thin uh, veneer planks to lay on top. Um, but yeah, that is it's disappointing. And this quality material isn't the same as the rest we've already seen. And I've just got a splinter. I have a bag which has got some wood strip in it. Now, I have no idea. No idea. Uh, my, my first thought is it's perhaps for making ladders or something like that because it's quite short but what that is i have no idea it looks like it's been um wire brush sharpened like a razor blade is so some form of um cutting device maybe don't know I'm sure it'll be in the instructions if we look closely but that is not something i've ever seen in a wooden kit before so we have our sails which are stuffed into this staple down bag um, and I've got to say the material feels really cheap and nasty and look at how shiny it is um, I've got to be honest that's never going anywhere near in any model of mine um, yeah I'm not sure what that's made out of but there has never been a sailing ship in the world with them um, sails that look like that in the 1700s <laughs> um god that is so you could use them as a template and maybe buy your own um sail material um i would suggest that's the only use you've got for that um oh, that's that's just <laughs> that is shockingly bad we have a small bag of brass nails um they're quite short and I've got to be honest, they look quite poor quality. 
and there's a lot of misshapen heads and yeah they they look quite cheap and nasty there was this in here which has clearly been added by the previous owner and they are far better quality nails um yeah so i'd be using those but uh, brass nails is not something I'm short of. And then leaves us with this bl blister pack of parts. The sales were in this larger one, I'm guessing, at some time. And we can see that someone has taken the back off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these out. I think we can uh, probably discard the cardboard top. And we can put that back in the kit box. Right then, let's have a look at what we've got. So in our first bag, we've got um, quite a chunky but laudably um, wooden, machined wooden um, ship's wheel. It's not a very attractive ship's wheel, I've got to say. Um, definitely seen better. So. That might be something we want to replace. And then we've got a machine wood windlass, and that looks quite nice. And then a, a material flag. No worse than any, any other manufacturers, to be honest. But that's what we've got in those bags. Okay, we have two lots of thread, um, and the difference is thickness. Um, obviously but it doesn't tell you what the thickness is which isn't helpful um, I like them being on these little tabs because they've got the little termination point for your thread which is always helpful not that they've been used at this point the thread itself it's okay it doesn't feel the best quality um, you can feel it it feels a little bit plasticky in some way a bit like the sails um, but my biggest issue is that we've got two, but they're the same colour. So we can't differentiate between standard rigging and running rigging. So for me, that's a little disappointing. Um, I'd want to show the standard and, and rigging and the running rigging as different colours because some of it will be tarred on the actual ship and some of it won't. And I can't use these to demonstrate that so it's another disappointment um, um, I have no idea what that is it's a bag of black dust I have no clue what that is I'm sure it tells us in the instructions is it for blackening the cannons maybe I, if you know what that is Please let me know in the comments because I haven't got the foggiest. The baling pins supplied are all wooden and that's nice. I don't like it when you get white metal ones. So um, they look okay actually. And um, I like the, um, the fact that they're wood and they've got a bit of staining on. So yeah, they're all this right. This bag, uh, I'm not opening the bags because I don't want to risk losing the parts. We've got some brass connecting uh, parts and o-rings and then we've got the ladders um, which are blocks of wooden steps um, and with the, they're just awful I you I didn't know just wouldn't use those that 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 is that is not how they'd be on the ship that that's just that is just cutting corners and being cheap in this bag we have some small uh, deck mounted guns, swivel guns, um, they're quite nicely done in turned brass, they look okay if you want to leave them brass or if you want to chemically blacken them they should look fine, uh, nothing wrong with those. Contains the parts for um, making the lanterns and a bit like some other manufacturers, they're sort of generic parts. Um, so we've got some brass um, wire, twisted wire that we're going to have to cut and shape to length and then we've got these plastic cones um, to put in which gives them this sort of orangey red colour. Um, uh, yeah they should look all right done it's just down to the preference of the model or whether they like that or not. So this bag it contains um, a number of 
um, little um, brass parts. We've got some dummy cannons there, which are probably stern cannons, I would think, possibly. Um, and I'm not quite sure what that part is. Some, there's some pins in there as well. I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, the brass um, eyes are really thick and chunky, um, over scale for one 150. Um, and then the um, rudder hinges are already chemically blackened, which is interesting. I don't think I've seen that before. Um, but I mean, essentially, there's nothing wrong with the parts. It's whether you want to swap them out or not. I seem to be saying that a lot, don't I? That's the last of our metal parts. We've got some uh, brass wire. Uh, we've got um, our cast metal anchors. And then we've got quite a few um, O-rings there. Nothing wrong with that. All good. The remaining bags are all the, the blocks and dead eyes. And they're all very nice. They're all in this um, sort of stained aged looking um, wood and as I look at these dead eyes um, the precision of the drilling looks to be very very good so have no issues with those at all we've got two different sizes of, of dead eyes as we'd expect and they're equally as good uh, and then as I look at these larger double blocks so I can see that one's damaged but um, the drilling of those is not quite as good. You can see there that they're sort of close together, not in line. So they're not as good, but they look okay. <laughs> and from a term, point of view of looking like aged wood, we've got some smaller double blocks here. Same issue with precision of drilling not being brilliant, although... Um, they're not the only manufacturer that can be guilty of that. So you hope to have a few extras so you can sort out your best ones. And then we've got a number of single blocks. And yeah, they're okay as well. And that's so it. So there we have it. Manuta's Golden Star. What are my first impressions? Oh, right. Where do we start with this one? Um, this is the worst wooden model ship um, in my stash without a doubt it's certainly the worst one we've, re we've reviewed um, and I say that because it is cheap it is cheap where it doesn't need to be cheap the cut corners some of the materials are really nice uh, some of the generic materials are good but what you see here is not what's been supplied to you in the box and that I think is dishonest as a start point um, because we can see for example that the um, sail material is completely different uh, we can see that the wooden materials are different there's um, we're not seeing the dark wood decks that would stand out quite differently and the same with the with the, the planking here so uh, uh, although some things are clearly the same that the the lamps and the the dreadful um, steps and bits and pieces I think you're going to end up with something that looks like this but some of your materials are going to look a bit different um, and it's really disappointing uh, when manufacturers do that so the thing that I kept saying as we went through this is you might want to swap this out you might want to swap this out so when you buy a kit and you can't make it out of the box because the materials aren't really to a standard that you'd want to display especially when the intention is that it's displayed in its natural woods I, I don't think that's that's quite good enough so um, it's not an expensive kit and you do get what you pay for um, but there are some things in there they could have done better so that we could have had some black thread that wouldn't have cost them anything to put a, a, a third roll of thread in um, we could have had um, the walnut parts um, made out of a sheet of solid wood rather than ply. And although it would be a bit more expensive and the kit price would be a bit more expensive, it would absolutely be worth it. The instructions themselves and the plans themselves, although busy, um, they look like they're quite comprehensive and therefore are probably not too bad to follow. 
So I am not worried about the instructions and the ability to build it other than it is single planked and that means you've got to know what you're doing with these curves um, and forming these shapes and being able to put all these planks nicely together um, so it's certainly not a kit for the beginner um, yeah for, for me I think this is a disappointing kit and the biggest disappointment is the sales because even if you do a really nice job of this and you stain it or you paint it or whatever you're going to have to replace the sails because <laughs> they are dreadful. Um, so there's a, a lot left to be desired. Um, now, uh, I don't know what I'll do when I come to build it. What I do know is every time I go to my stash of wooden model ships, I'll pick something else before I pick this because I know this is going to be a frustrating one and I'm going to have to replace some parts. So if I never get round to building all of my uh, wooden model ship stash, um, this will be this will be one that someone will have to sell for me when I've moved on because um, it's probably the last one I'll ever build. But there you go. You have my view of this Minuta model. It's enough for me to say I wouldn't buy another Minuta model. Um, if you were in the market for this, or you'd perhaps seen it and thought, well, this might be a nice, simple um, first kit, my advice to you is, no, it wouldn't. Do not buy this if you've never built a wooden ship before. Make sure you've got a little bit of experience. And now you can go into this with your eyes open. And whether you just want to build it for fun and you don't care about the, the quality of materials, that's perfectly doable. You know, you're going to end up with a model ship um, one way or another. Um, or whether you want to swap it all out and turn it into a masterpiece, you now know what you get in the kit. Hope that was useful. Thank you very much for looking in. You enjoy your modelling, and I will see you very soon.